Hello, come in. Hello, my name is Alex. Pleased to meet you. What's your name, please? My name is Havisha. Havisha. Please sit down, Havisha. Um, Havisha, do you have any identification? Yeah. Let me see that. That's lovely. Thank you very much. And could I have your report form? Yeah. Thank you very much. So, Havisha, we're going to start with your presentation. And following this, we will have a discussion about your presentation. Then we'll move on to the interactive phase. And this is followed by the listening task. And then we'll finish with the conversation. All right, the whole exam will take about 25 minutes. Yes, sure. Okay, so what have you decided to talk about today? Yeah, Present. today I'm going to speak on euthanasia. Okay, I will be making some notes, but this is just yeah. for my reference. It's not about language. All and right. I have got something for you okay. so that you can refer. This is the outline of my topic about what I'm going to speak. Okay, so please begin. Okay, what is euthanasia? Euthanasia, in general terms, means is it, it is not yet defined very clearly because it depends on the personal view of, and it differs from person to person. Mm -hmm. Does it mean mercy killing, dignified death, pain terminating illness, and causing a painless death? Okay, uh, it's it is derived from the Greek word "eu" meaning good and "thanatos" meaning death, which combined means a well death or dying well. Okay, and here. This is another paper which I've got for your clear reference. Euthanasia is deliberately bringing about the death of a patient. In some cases it is voluntary and in some cases it is involuntary. Deliberating, deliberately bringing about death means if a patient is uh, having a disease, you know, is having a prolonged disease where his survival is at stake. I mean, it is not very clearly defined as to how long can he survive. Then we perform this. And then uh, there are different types, which is active and passive. Active is, this involves not merely a refusal to be medicated, but a conscious and deliberate decision to end one's life. That is done by the patient himself. And passive is, the patient rejects it, but the doctors perform it on him. That is done in the supervision of the family also. The family's advice is also taken into consideration. And then uh, here are the actual conditions when euthanasia is performed. When the disease is non-curable and when the diseases like stroke, incurable pain and cardiopulmonary diseases. And then uh, this person is in no state of performing any normal activities. Next we have uh, experts worldwide have uh, you know put this topic into discussion and there are many pros and cons of these. First we discuss the cons. Uh, many experts believe that it is a way to relieve pain and it's a way to reduce the medical bills and it is also a way of relief when a person's life is very low or cannot be judged. And then the pros of it is it devalues, in a way people believe that it devalues human life and in most cases it is used in a very negative manner. Like, you know, uh, killing the person voluntarily even though he doesn't want it and sometimes for personal uses also. And then next we have, uh, how is this taken about in various countries? Uh, because this topic or this uh, word is not familiar in many parts of the globe. But in wherever it is familiar or like it is legalized in various countries like Belgium and then Luxembourg, Netherlands, etc. In our own, in my own country, that's India, there are voluntary organizations who are helping about to bring awareness about this term. And then uh, in Netherlands, law allows the life of a person to be taken upon his or her choice. And next we have, this is a very re recent case of euthanasia which has been quite popular. This lady called Shkavio, who was rendered a quadriplegic 15 years ago. And then she's, uh, she remains responsive to all the things and requires no sub life support. She only needs a tube to be fed upon during meals or you know during lunch time or whenever she requires food. And now her, her lawyers are arguing to be uh, for the euthanasia to be performed on her, whereas uh, others are not uh, ready to accept it. So there's going to be a bill that will be passed in the US Congress about her case. And then finally, I would like to conclude by saying that uh, euthanasia is not generalized. There's no standard of performing this. It is purely to be thought in a moral and human way about how a life should be ended or should it be prolonged. 
and uh, finally i would like to say that it's purely one way of looking at the way the person is that's it thank you thank you very much my first question is a quite a simple one are you for it or you against it i mean you gave a, a lot of information but what's your personal uh, yeah. belief personally i believe that uh, euthanasia should be performed if the person you know if the patient is in a very what i can say a very a least or you know least uh, possible way i mm. mean if the person has prolonged illness like you know he's on life support system for uh, nearly a month or a year and then his brain has stopped working he has to be fed on the tubes mm. i don't think you know personally i believe uh, i don't think uh, he has to the doctors need to treat him and he has to prolong his life but there are cases where people for example uh, i can give you a, a real case where a girl was injured in a car accident and she was in a situation in a coma for about 5 years and they mm -hmm. thought she was going to die and they considered euthanasia for her and yet she came back she came was conscious again and eventually recovered so had they killed her that would have been murder surely Yeah, see, this case I am telling you, I also have read about such cases, but they are one in hundred. I am mm -hmm. telling you for sure, they are only one in hundred. I certainly believe that such cases should be dealt, uh, you know, after going through a lot mm -hmm. of uh, books and you know a lot of information regarding the case. But I don't think in such cases euthanasia should be performed. I want to tell it. if suppose a 60 year man or a woman meets an accident, mm -hmm. and you know, like he is the head of the family. so at that time many people you know go for mm -hmm. go for i think that time people should go for euthanasia the problem i have with this is with the increase in medical technology and advancements it's now possible at the other side of life where children are born very prematurely so yeah. maybe 20 weeks premature um they would die ordinarily and yet we manage to keep them alive and these young children these if they actually grow into adulthood will be permanently disabled and so on so why isn't euthanasia considered for premature babies but uh, as far as my information is concerned i don't think euthanasia is a term applied to particular age group it depends it is purely one's way of looking at it and mm. in most cases it is voluntary in most cases it is involuntary in you know in, uh, in at most number of cases the doctors and the family come in coordination mm. with one another take lot of decisions then discuss with the medical council and then perform this so in the ideal world would you suggest that india should pass legislation that enables voluntary euthanasia yeah i strongly believe and i think it should come out with this but i still think this even if this happened it would then be open to abuse and i think then there would be people who they would say it's voluntary but how is this proven you know, it may be something very difficult to prove and i think the system would be abused no see i would like to give you some facts uh, in india nearly 8 million people approximately 8 million people suffer in poverty and the rest uh, you can take around 10 to 12 million they are not able to afford to the medical bills so what i want to say is even if the government passes this legislation i believe it will be a hit or you know it will be a success because uh, most of them are unable to afford and if such cases occur like a girl you know for example as you have stated a girl has been in coma for 5 mm. years as far as indian attitude is concerned if a girl is in coma for 5 years i don't think you know the doc the parents or whoever is his family can support the girl till 5 years mm -hmm. they might have performed euthanasia one year or six but months but then this months. becomes an economical argument it's about money yes. and therefore yes. if someone is in a rich position and they could sustain someone's life perhaps yes. sufficiently that they might recover yeah. whereas a poor family with no money oh well it's okay then then they can be killed Yeah. Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry is? to state this but that's the general attitude that goes on. And you support that? Yeah, sometimes it is true. So life is money. Life is I I don't state that life is money. What I want to say is when you can't afford and as as such the mm. person is really in a critical condition. He's in a coma, you know, he has he needs some support. Mm. I don't think, you know, families have so much time or, you know, so much money to spare upon. And it's per when the person's life is no more why do they come? 
Okay, now this is all very figurative and distant, but let's say, I mean, you know, obviously I hope it never does, but if this were to happen to you and someone you love very closely yeah. was severely or seriously ill, uh, critically ill, do you think you would have the, the guts, the, the bravity to be able to say, yeah, I think it's time for them to die? Yeah, surely. You think you could? Yeah, surely. I because am not sure. Uh, because see, instead of uh, seeing him so painful, it's better you end his mm -hmm. life. Why do you have to see him in so much pain? Okay. God has given you two eyes, so let him pass. But if they're through. unconscious in a coma, you don't know. Yeah, that's what. I maybe the person is unconscious, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm conscious and I can see him. What his pain is. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have so many guts to see his pain. You know? okay. Rather, I'll tell him. Yeah, so please. Maybe the easy on. way out. Well, thank you very much for for talking to me about uh, euthanasia. So now we're going to move on to the next stage of the exam, which is the interactive task. Okay. Now, uh, in this task, um, I'll start by telling you something, and you have to ask me questions to find out more information and make comments. It's your responsibility to maintain the conversation. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. People often say that academic qualifications are the key to a child's future success, um, I'm not sure I completely agree. Yes, this is a very good point you have raised. Uh, don't you agree academics are an important part of life? Yes, but I don't think it's key to their success. Yes, I also believe it's not the key to the success. And what do you think should be done? What do you define success as? Is it academics and extra qualifications or academics? Or, or what, what do you define success as? Well, obviously, I'm, I don't mean <coughs> academic success. What I'm saying is one can succeed from a sociological point of view. So they can get into a very good position, a good job, often make a lot of money, um, and in that sense be successful, often without any formal qualifications. Can you give me some examples? Yeah, many. I, well, in my opinion, most entrepreneurs are, are not well educated. Many of them start from, from nothing, and they start small businesses and so on. So do you think, uh, actually in my opinion, I believe uh, part of education is necessary. Though education is not a life, not uh, you know, the entire life or the entire success. I believe uh, education is part of life. But uh, in the present day or in, the, in this competitive world, people are nowhere without academics. How do you define that? Or how do you well, I would that? disagree. I don't think they are nowhere. I think if you have academic academic qualifications, it sends you one way, not the other. But uh, many experts are against this. They say, mm -hmm. you know, I, if I take an example of my case, or in my country, people here are for academics. Mm -hmm. They don't see uh, how you are or what you are, what kind of person you are. They go in only for, see, first they ask me what's your percentage, mm -hmm. and then they start grading people. So how do you think that should change? Well, I, I don't know why people should be defined by their academic background. But that's the way it's going on. How do you think you can change it? Or how do you think well, you can bring it to change? In my own example, many people I know that are, in my opinion, the most successful have never been to university. But how did they gather the basic information required? For example, I want to say if he's an entrepreneur, he needs to have a basic uh, knowledge about math, science, uh, not science exactly, economics and statistics. But how did he This is that? where I would disagree. I think it's all about having the personality and being in the right place at the right time. Uh, how can you, can you elaborate on that? Let me give you an example. I mean, someone very close to me has never left school quite early. They've never been to university. They took a temp job. Uh, and ended up in a television company, a very lowly job, and over years worked their way up, and now they are a managing director of a, a large television company. But uh, do they have the required knowledge of what is required uh, for the television industry or whatever it but is? But only that they learn by experience. And I think many countries exaggerate the value of academic success. I also believe academics are a part of life. They don't form your entire life. but. Uh, at one side, I have a feeling that uh, uh, academics give you the basic knowledge of how to survive. Mm. Do you agree on this? I certainly agree academics are needed. I'm not, not putting all academics in the bin. All I'm saying is uh, I don't think it's the only way to become successful. I think there are many others. Okay. So how else? How else can you... You know, many people, when this question is posed in another way, many people ask me personally, 
to define mm -hmm. about how you can get a balance of what is academics and balance of what is extracurricular activities mm -hmm. and what is success actually. Can you just give me or you know ask, well, tell me how do I justify them? Because well, I, think I agree reality, with your point. You know, yeah. There are people that, that fail academically and succeed in business and I know a lot of other people who academically have a wonderful record but in a way their life is not so successful yeah. so they don't get a good job or anything like that. Oh, so, uh, so you think that uh, people who are academically sound or technically sound have no time to go on to other activities or mm. improve their personality, is it so? No, no, not all. I'm just saying some have good academic success but fail in other areas, that's all I mean. Like in other areas in the sense? Profession, getting a job, happy marriage, all these things. Oh. Well, thank you very much for talking to me um, about that. Okay. So now we'll move on to the listening task. Okay. I'm going to read you three short passages, and after I've finished each one, I'd like you to either suggest a suitable ending or answer a question. Uh, I'll then move on to the next passage. Are you ready? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Now, these two passages are incomplete, so when I stop, I'd like you to tell me in just a few words how you think the passage finishes. I've no problem with long distances, but it's getting harder to make things out close up especially if the light is poor. Uh, the small print on labels or in newspapers is becoming a bit of a problem too, and I often find myself squinting. There's nothing else for it. Um, I really think I'll have to start wearing... Gloves or something protective. Thank you. My poor friend Mike came back from the beach the other day with a bright red face and wincing in pain every time something brushed his skin. He's usually cautious and sensible, but although he'd set out with all the right gear for a hot day, apparently he had fallen asleep by the sea without putting on any... Uh, sunscreen? Thank you. After I've read this passage, I will ask you about such things as the context and the people involved. Okay. Evening and weekend work isn't unusual in my line of work. I seem to spend half my life either running to auditions or checking my voicemail for news of a possible callback. Occasionally I suffer from stage fright, but normally I, I manage to control my nerves. I love getting into character, and I have a great memory, which is handy for learning lines. What is the speaker's job? He's an artist, or a stage theatre player, or a theatre artist. Thank you very much. So now we'll move on to the conversation phase, and I'd like to talk to you, first of all, about roles in the family. Yeah, sure. Now, I'm not entirely sure that the father should always be the role model. Sorry, I defend this point, because I believe for any kid, if the kid is a girl, a father, he's the first man in her life, mm -hmm. or if the kid is a son, uh, the mother, she is the first woman in her life. So personally, I believe that uh, father should be the role model because fa father or the dad may mm -hmm. have negative and positive points, but obviously he's the first person or the first man a kid meets in his life. I take your point, but uh, I think often the father isn't a good role model, and I think it's assumed that, that the father should always be, and many cases will be, but I don't think it's always the right, the right role model. Yeah, but I think uh, until the tender age of 5, 6, or you can take it up to 10 mm. or 15 at the most, uh, a boy or a girl doesn't see, you know, more outer world than her father, her or his father. Mm -hmm. Because he's the first person who goes out from the family and comes in. And, you know, until 15 or 20, there's no proper maturity levels in the mm -hmm. kid. So I don't think until that age, None other than father can replace. But don't you think it might be useful for, for schools and um, for younger children just to be given some guidance in that maybe role models can be found outside of the family? Yeah, uh, that can be done. I believe uh, certainly that can be done. I think uh, there should be counsellors, mm -hmm. so-called educational counsellors, so that they can counsel the young children and tell them and give them the definition of exactly what mm -hmm. a role model is. So. And then, you know, tell them, this is your role model. This is how people define. Mm -hmm. These are the views. Do you think 
I mean, almost by default, young kids choose their parents as role models. Do you think as children get older, they do start choosing other role models anyway? Is it a natural progression? Yes, yes sure. Who Certainly is your role they model? do it. <laughs> to me, I have two role models. Mm -hmm. uh, one is Abraham Lincoln. Wow, okay. Because of his uh, fighting spirit, mm. I mean, his undetermined fighting yeah. spirit till the age of 52 or 53. Okay, not because of his beard? No. no. <laughs> and I don't need other? a beard. <laughs> <laughs> who is the other one? Uh, the other is uh, my dad, of course, yeah. okay. because he's really hardworking guy. Mm -hmm. So I think nobody okay. can replace him. Now, many, many people are hardworking, uh, and the other thing I would say about roles in the family, or would like to ask you, why is it that it's almost the woman seems to sustain the house, and the man goes out as the breadwinner? Um, is that the way it should be, in your opinion? Uh, in my opinion, I think the man and the woman should share the sustainability of the house. Mm -hmm. Because in this 21st century, the women are also going out to work. In India, actually, why this hierarchy came is, in olden days, the men used to go out for war and all other things. Because in olden days, that was the only profession. And then the women would take care of the kids in the family. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that con that legacy continued till date. But mm -hmm. whereas I think in this 21st century, it has changed because the women are also going to work. And then I find these days that the men and women both are equally sharing the responsibilities of the house. I would disagree, really. I mean, from the people I've spoken to whilst I'm here, the impression I get is the woman does everything. She wakes up earlier than the man so she can prepare food and um, works incredibly hard all the time. I mean, is this really what does happen? See, you have spoken to one half of the people. <laughs> you spoken to the other half. Carefully select it. Um, all right, well, thank you for talking to me about roles in the family. Um, let's change the subject. Yes. And I'd also like to ask you about youth behavior. Yes. Now, where I come from, there is an increasing problem with young people misbehaving Really, it's about a lack of respect, and I wondered on, well, what are your beliefs about how youth behaviour is changing? Personally, I'm a youngster, and I believe that half the population in the youth is turning towards good, and the other half are going towards the mm -hmm. bad side. And what catalyzes whether one goes to the good or the bad? What, what makes See, this happen? I categorize people as good or bad depending on the way they behave and depending upon how focused they are in their career or how focused they are towards the society. Because the good here, in my place, the good are defined as the ones who show some social responsibility. Mm -hmm. And they are into po if you are into politics, if you are into you know social service, if you are into uh, helping the poor. That's a really noble thought. Whereas the bad here mm -hmm. are into the as usual drugs, smoking. They have no family mm -hmm. values and all that. But but others might say rather than the choice of a child to go one way or another, others might say it's actually the influence of the family, the conditioning, uh, the wealth, you know, the, the surroundings into which they are born. I think that's a stronger contributory factor as to whether one is socially aware and, and you know, they behave. Yeah. We discussed a topic earlier about roles in the family. I think both these topics are interrelated. I would agree. Yeah. Uh, because the roles in the family or the impartation of uh, the, you know, what you can say, the values, the family values or the system into the child is very important. And these days it is getting diluted because of the wealth of what if I agree with you, mm -hmm. because the wealth or the upbringing of the child is certainly the most influencing factor. Mm -hmm. And the other influencing factor is the environment to which the child goes for mm -hmm. completing his schooling or university or whatever it is. So what you're saying is there's no volition on behalf of the child? Sorry? Can you that there's no that? choice on behalf of the child. It's just inevitable. No, 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 I don't think so. Because there are many people, uh, as I've categorized, there are many bad people who enter the university and turn good and make wonders. Mm -hmm. It's always, I believe, 75% is dependent on the child, and mm -hmm. the rest 25% is his environment and his upbringing and all that. And what one thing do you think could be implemented that would increase youth behavior in regard to making it better? See, I believe, because I'm a socialite, I mean, I believe in going out and meeting people. As far as I have seen, uh, the government should do something. They mm -hmm. should make, you know, society service a compulsory and a mandatory okay. thing. So and an then, idea. And then, uh, you know, they should impart strict rules about banning few things in the college premises. 
though they are banned people do it illegally mm. and moreover the university regulations or authorities sh- should be more strict in these terms they have to see to it that uh, a person or mm-hmm. a child go or a youngster goes and participates in various mm-hmm. social things and there's something towards the society but we started by you saying it's getting worse do you think it mm-hmm. is yeah i believe yes well let's hope it gets better well and yes. um, sri hivisha we have finished it was lovely to meet you thank, thank you very you. much have a good day thank you goodbye <laughs>